This colourful cylinder is a piece of mouse brain, a very small piece. It's two hundredths of a millimetre long. It may be small, but it's a really complete inventory. Unlike previous efforts to map the brain, it contains all the cell types in this area, not just the neurons. And it's from the cortex, an area that does more sophisticated computations. Here's the area next to a human hair. Even this micro-sample is giving surprising hints about how the brain works. To do the study, a Harvard team used a machine to cut a piece of mouse cortex into thousands of wafer-thin slices, which they stuck on a ribbon and scanned. Here we're moving through the stack of brain slices, like a flipbook. The team took these still images and crunched the data to rebuild the piece of brain tissue. It's from a bit of the mouse brain that receives information from the skin. Here are all the neurons which feature in some way in the speck of brain the team focused on. But they were really only able to analyse this much. They focused on two brain cell branches that interact in this portion. You can start to make out the components here. In red and green, the two main cell branches. Then, all the other neurons that travel through the area at some point. Here are all the synapses, the connections that neurons make with each other. Here are the inhibitory connections, which dampen down activity. And not forgetting the non-neuronal cells, like these glia, which support the neurons and help them send messages to each other all in an area smaller than a dust mite. This tiny tissue sample is teaching scientists some principles of brain mechanics. Neuroscientists often assume that neurons that are neighbours are likely to connect more than distant ones. But the team were surprised to find that this pattern didn't hold. In this image, all the neuron branches are very closely packed, but only the red and yellow here in the middle are actually connected. Humans have a much bigger cortex than mice. And it's where all the interesting stuff happens, like our memory and personality. But given how much data lives in this tiny piece of mouse brain, doing the same for humans is a distant prospect. Then again, nobody said the brain was going to be easy to understand, did they? <laughs>